In the wake of a terrorist attack in London earlier this month, a U.S. congressman wrote a Facebook post in which he called for the slaughter of radicalized Muslims. Hunt them, identify them, and kill them, declared the U.S. Representative Clay Higgins, a Louisiana Republican. Kill them all. For the sake of all that is good and righteous. Kill them all. Higgins' plea for violent revenge went untouched by Facebook workers who scour the social network deleting offensive speech. But in May, posting on Facebook by Boston poet and Black Lives Matter activist Didi Delgado drew a different response. All white people are racist. Start from this reference point, or you've already failed. Delgado wrote. The post was removed and her Facebook account was disabled for seven days. A trove of internal documents reviewed by ProPublica sheds new light on the secret guidelines that Facebook censors use to distinguish between hate speech and legitimate political expression. The documents reveal the rationale behind seemingly inconsistent decisions. For instance, Higgins' incitement to violence passed muster because it targeted a specific subgroup of Muslims, those that are radicalized, while Delgado's post was deleted for attacking whites in general. Over the past decade, the company has developed hundreds of rules, drawing elaborate distinctions between what should and shouldn't be allowed, in an effort to make the site a safe place for its nearly 2 billion users. The issue of how Facebook monitors this content has become increasingly prominent in recent months, with the rise of fake news, fabricated stories that circulated on Facebook like Pope Francis shocks the world, endorses Donald Trump for president, releases statement, and growing concern that terrorists are using social media for recruitment. While Facebook was credited during the 2010-2011 Arab Spring with facilitating uprisings against authoritarian regimes, the documents suggest that, at least in some instances, the company's hate speech rules tend to favor elites and governments over grassroots activists and racial minorities. In so doing, they serve the business interests of the global company, which relies on national governments not to block its service to their citizens. Facebook trains its censors to delete hate speech against protected categories, including white males, but to allow attacks on subsets, such as female drivers and black children. One Facebook rule, which is cited in the documents but that the company said is no longer in effect, banned posts that praised the use of violence to resist occupation of an internationally recognized state. The company's workforce of human censors, known as content reviewers, has deleted posts by activists and journalists in disputed territories such as Palestine, Kashmir, Crimea and Western Sahara. One document trains content reviewers on how to apply the company's global hate speech algorithm. The slide identifies three groups, female drivers, black children and white men. It asks, which group is protected from hate speech? The correct answer, white men. The reason is that Facebook deletes curses, slurs, calls for violence and several other types of attacks only when they are directed at protected categories based on race, sex, gender identity, religious affiliation, national origin, ethnicity, sexual orientation and serious disability, disease. It gives users broader latitude when they write about subsets of protected categories. White men are considered a group because both traits are protected, while female drivers and black children, like radicalized Muslims, are subsets because one of their characteristics is not protected. The exact rules are in the slideshow below. The Facebook rules Facebook has used these rules to train its content reviewers to decide whether to delete or allow posts. Facebook says the exact wording of its rules may have changed slightly in more recent versions. ProPublica recreated the slides. Behind this seemingly arcane distinction lies a broader philosophy. Unlike American law, which permits preferences such as affirmative action for racial minorities and women for the sake of diversity or redressing discrimination, Facebook's algorithm is designed to defend all races and genders equally. Sadly, the rules are incorporating this color blindness idea which is not in the spirit of why we have equal protection, said Danielle Citrin, a law professor and expert on information privacy at the University of Maryland. This approach, she added, will protect the people who least need it and take it away from those who really need it. But Facebook says its goal is different, to apply consistent standards worldwide. The policies do not always lead to perfect outcomes, said Monica Bickert, head of global policy management at Facebook. That is the reality of having policies that apply to a global community where people around the world are going to have very different ideas about what is okay to share. Facebook's rules constitute a legal world of their own. They stand in sharp contrast to the United States First Amendment protections of free speech which courts have interpreted to allow exactly the sort of speech and writing censored by the company's hate speech algorithm. 
but they also differ, for example, in permitting postings that deny the Holocaust, from more restrictive European standards. The company has long had programs to remove obviously offensive material like child pornography from its stream of images and commentary. Recent articles in The Guardian and Sudutch Ziding have detailed the difficult choices that Facebook faces regarding whether to delete posts containing graphic violence, child abuse, revenge porn and self-mutilation. The challenge